Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Array Methods 5, Part 2, Module 1, and we made it to the last lesson in this section, so excellent work. Uh, remove from back of new. Write a function called remove from back of new, give it an array, remove from back of new, returns a new array containing all but the last element of the given array. You should be familiar with the slice method. Alright, fair enough. So, one of the things that slice had previously, uh, Punch it in here real quick. I'll show you on the Mozilla Developer Network, array.prototype.slice. Uh, returns a shallow copy of the portion of the array. So essentially, that means that we can create a copy of the array. Now hopefully there's an example down here of this happening. If there isn't, it's not the end of the world. Oh boy. This is what I meant about uh, Mozilla, Mozilla Developer Network being a little bit heavy, especially at the beginning, because it's like, what is all of this? And it's like, don't, don't worry about it for now. Um, okay, so no luck on an example for this, so you can just take my word for it. Um, might be one if begin is un, begin is greater than the. Uh, it might say it here somewhere, but essentially what you want to keep in mind is if we call slice uh, with zero, it's going to cut the whole array, and I think that we can call slice with no arguments, and it'll just make a copy. So we'll say copy of array is equal to array uh, dot slice. We could put zero in here, but I think it does the same thing as just not having anything. So if we have a copy of array, we want to return everything, uh, we want to remove something from the back of the new array and then return that array. Uh, we're going to use pop. Pop is what's going to allow us to basically pop off the last element of the array. So we'll say copy of array dot pop this is going to get rid of the last element or remove from the back of our new array and then we'll return copy of array. So create a copy using slice, pop the last element off, which I think the last time we did this we used slice again, but this is just another way to do it. Uh, return copy of array, so slice it, pop it, return it. Excellent. Remove from front of new, so we're going to do a very similar operation to start. We're going to create a copy of the array using slice without any parameters. We should say arguments. So these are parameters, but in an example like this where we're calling it, R is the argument. So parameters for the definition, arguments for a call to the function. So we'll say, okay, don't want to do that. So we'll go and try to get our keys underneath us. And okay, so variable, um, what do we call it? Copy of array? That's a decent variable name. Copy of array. It's not great, but it's a decent one. Array.slice. So we have a copy of our new array. We want to remove something from the front. So if you'll recall, removing something from the front is the shift method. We'll say copy of array dot shift, and that's going to remove an element from the front of our new copied array. And then we'll return copy of array. And we're in good shape. So we copied it, shifted, and then returned it. Uh, write a function called ca count character. I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but this question is lost. Uh, this is not an array methods question. Maybe they're just throwing a curveball, but we'll kind of, you know, lean into it and we'll be okay. So write a function called count character. Given a string input and a character, count character returns the number of occurrences of a given character in the given string. Hmm, not really sure why they would have this here, but a couple of things that we're going to do. First, we'll create a count variable. And this is this is, makes sense, right? We have a string input and some kind of car, character input, but we're returning a number. And that number represents the number of occurrences of this char element inside of this string. So a string is a collection of characters. We're looking for one character. We're going to find out how many times that character exists in this string and then return that count. So if that's the case, we need a count variable. I always like to jump to the bottom here and say return count variable, just to make sure that as I'm planning this out, I don't forget that once I have added everything up, I'll need to return that because that's the return value of this function. Iterate over the characters in the input string. For now, we're not going to worry how to do that. We're just going to assume that we want to. If we need to count the characters, we're going to want to look at all the characters. How we do that is not really important for our thought process, at least right now. Iterate over the characters in the input string. 
if current character, and we're going to assume that we can access the current character, meaning as we move along the string, we could access individually i, then a space, then a, then m, then a space, and so on. So if the current character matches input char, which is this guy, then we'll increment the count by one, because we know that we have seen the character that we're counting one more time. Count variable is going to start at zero. We increment it each time we see it. Match doesn't have an E, and although I guess matches does. And then increment the count by one. Once we've done that, and you can see how we've indented each one of these. Very useful for pseudocode. This is only going to take place inside of the iteration, and this is only going to take place in the case where this if statement that we're theoretically going to write returns true. So we don't increment the count per each iteration. We only increment the count given that the input character matches the current character we've iterated to. So this is the first time I'm going to do this where I'm going to splice in the code to the pseudocode so that it lines up nicely. It can be a little bit tricky to do as a beginner, but it never hurts to get started with something like this because it can be very useful to have this sort of inline commentary within your code during an interview, mostly because it gives you an easier thing to parse. It's much easier to reason about this than it will be about the code that you've written, mostly because once you get code on the page, you tend to want to keep that code regardless of its efficacy or I should say it's utility for the problem. So variable count is equal to zero. Again, I'm going to jump down and return the count because I know I'm going to. Iterate over the characters in the input string. Now, this is one of those where JavaScript gives you like 50 ways to do this, and it's because JavaScript has been built like several times over several years, and uh, we're just going to use one. So we can create a for loop that's going to look almost identical to a, an array for loop, but it's just going to be iterating over a string. String characters are zero indexed and can be accessed using like string at three. The only difference is, is that they're immutable. So we can't say something like string at five is equal to something different and expect the string to change. But we're not doing that. We're just accessing the characters. So the fact that strings are immutable, meaning we can't change them in place the way we could in array, is it doesn't really matter to us. So for variable i, i is less than the string dot length, i plus plus. Each section of the for loop is separated by these uh, semicolons. If the current character, so current character is just going to be string at i. i is the variable, string is the string that we're iterating over, or str is the string we're iterating over, so str at i is essentially the current character. We want to make sure that that matches the input char, which is one of our parameters. In the event that it is, we increment the count by one. So count plus equals one, count equals count plus one, uh, well, plus one, and then we can also do count plus plus. That's going to set count equal to whatever it was, plus one. So if you can see, it's a little harder to read this the first time, but reasoning about this, if it turns out that we're wrong, can be delightful, because it can be the case that maybe this statement is correct, but we haven't coded it properly, in which case we just get rid of this. And there's other versions of why this would work, and also why it's a bad idea. So keep in mind, at this point, you're looking for a description of the terrain rather than preferences about anything. So we've counted up the, we set a count variable, we incremented, we're incrementing the count, we're sorry, we're iterating, then we're incrementing the count variable where the current character is equal to the input char, and then we're going to return the count at the end. So even though this really isn't an array methods question, we have successfully swept it under the rug with the rest of the array methods. So thanks for watching this video. This is the end of uh, part two. Uh, hope you're enjoying them, and we'll see you in the next video.